Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to NJACAC's um, Virtual College Exploration Week. I'm glad that you can join us. Um, we do have some great panelists today that are joining us um, for the Best of Burlington session. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things that I'd like to review with you. Um, first, please use the Q&A button um, if you have any questions. Um, the presenters will be trying to toggle back and forth between the presentation um, and then your questions. So please feel free to ask away. Um, I just ask that your camera and microphone um, be turned off. Um, that way the panelists can't see or hear you. Um, and then also just as a reminder, this is one of many sessions that are taking place this week and next week. Um, so definitely check out the njacac.org website to find out other sessions um, that will be available. Um, and then the recording will be available as well. Um, so if you wanted to refer back to it, you can always go back to our website um, and you'll be able to see that. It will be about a week until that will be available. Um, but just so you know, that is an option for you. Um, I hope that you enjoy our session today. Um, so at this time, I will turn it over to our panelists. All right, hello everyone. Uh, we're actually gonna introduce ourselves first and then we'll dive into our presentations. Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Candace. I'm the admissions counselor from the University of Vermont who works with all the students in New Jersey. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Kelly. I work at St. Michael's College as an admission counselor and I am also the territory manager for New Jersey. And hello everyone, I am Emily Rudolph. I am the admissions counselor for Champlain College. I'm also an alum and uh, an alum of living in New Jersey as well. So I look forward to chatting with you all. All right, we're gonna go ahead and actually kick it off with Champlain College. So let me just pull up my presentation. Um, all right, I'm so happy to tell you all about our school here at Champlain. We are a small private school, which is located in the hill section of Burlington, Vermont which overlooks uh, Lake Champlain and the Adirondack Mountains. This is a, an image of our uh, courtyard taken from our library so you get an idea of what our campus looks like. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is our academic approach at Champlain. Our whole goal with, uh, uh, with how we approach our academics is making sure our students are career ready. And not only to make sure that they have the skills to be successful within the career, but also to be leaders and problem solvers, solvers within their career. So in order to achieve this goal, by the time you graduate, we've gone ahead and broken down our education approach into three different tiers. We have our major based classes, which are that are um, presented under what's called the upside down curriculum. The upside down curriculum basically means that we have our students in their major based classes from day one. Our students have four full years to be learning in the classroom from professors that are leaders and in their industries that they're looking to teach those skills. Next, we have our core curriculum, which is our liberal arts program approach. And that is where we're looking to teach you those skills to be leaders and problem solvers. These are discussion led classes um, that are also mixed majors. So students get to learn from and work with students that are that like to approach problems differently, that think differently than they can so that you can already start getting exposed to that. Finally, we have what's called our insight program. Our insight program is not made up of credit bearing classes, but is made up of games, competitions, and seminars that we ask all students to complete five hours a year in. And the insight program is around to teach students how to navigate their careers. So how to have a really awesome resume, um, practicing networking skills, uh, link building those LinkedIn profiles, and making sure they know what to do before, during, and after an interview to get that dream job of theirs. We're also in the Insight program looking to teach students about how to budget themselves um, in the future after they graduate. So based on what your average salary could be with that career you have in mind, how can you budget yourself? Um, understanding what a 401k retirement fund is, credit scores, what makes them good and bad and how they affect your life, leases, mortgages, all the things your parents talk about that uh, sound a little scary, we wanna teach to you. So that's a quick breakdown of our academic approach. And next we're gonna look at our majors. So we have 28 career focused majors at Champlain College that are broken down into four different schools of study. Any student that wants to come in undeclared is more than welcome to because of that upside down curriculum, you have a full year to actually uh, try out a few different majors before you declare at the end of that first year um, and you're not losing any time. 
So if a student wants to come in undeclared, we just ask them to pick one of the schools of study and then they can take classes in three majors that fall underneath. Also, what's great about majors with the upside down curriculum, if you come in declaring a major, it gives you a little more time to try that major out. And if it's just not the right fit for you, it gives you more time to work with your faculty and academic advisors to make a change early on. So let's actually go ahead and talk about some of the majors that you can find at Champlain. We have our Stiller School of Business, which is our longest running program. Under that, you're gonna find business administration, finance, game production management, international business, marketing. Next, we have communication and creative media, which is our arts-based programs, broadcast media production, communication, filmmaking, and more. Uh, education and human studies, criminal justice, law, psychology, and if you wanna become a teacher. Uh, environmental policy is really popular as well. And then finally, information technology and sciences, which is applied mathematics, uh, cybersecurity, digital forensics, and more. One other thing to mention about majors at Champlain, while it's not its own school of study, it is pretty unique, and that's our game studio program. So any student that wants to go into a video game career in their future, we have five majors that fall underneath our game studio. We have, um, as I mentioned, game production management, which is the business side of things, game design, which is the rules in the universe of the game, game art, which is the look of the game, game programming, which is the coding, and our newest one is game sound, which is all the cool sound effects. So if you're interested in going into a industry in video games, uh, Champlain is a really good fit for that. All right, uh, as you can see, we have 34 minors as well. Um, you can major and minor, or some of these programs you can double major in as well. We can help you out, navigate that if you'd like. All right, so um, something that's really interesting at Champlain, we do require internships. 89% um, of our 2019 graduates completed one or more internship during their time with us, but a good chunk of those students actually completed two or more um, for a lot of different reasons. One, because of that upside down curriculum, students can start internships earlier, usually in their second year. Um, we have tons of centers of experience on campus that students can do internships with through the school, especially for students who are interested in marketing or in the digital forensics and cybersecurity fields. Um, and we also have a really awesome team on campus called the Career Collaborative Team. They're the ones that put together that insight program, and they also work to build a network that students and alumni can access at any time to help them find those internships, whether they want to do one here in Burlington, if they wanna do one at home, or if you wanna do one internationally, we have that option as well. We're actually gonna chat about that next, which is my favorite thing to talk about, and that's study abroad. 50% of, over 50% of our students uh, study abroad each year, and we have a lot of different options. Our most popular option would be students attending one of the Champlain specific campuses that's out in the world. One is in Dublin, Ireland, and the other is in Montreal, Canada. One of the reasons we picked these places is because English is a main spoken language. So that removes an obstacle of what it means to live in a different country, um, but also for that internship opportunity that helps you be able to get in the fields because you can already speak the language. And we also picked these areas because a lot of the hubs um, of the industries that we have majors in um, are around these cities, especially for game design and filmmaking in Montreal. We have a ton of third party partnerships as well though, so you really can go anywhere in the world. I'll talk really briefly about Burlington. You'll be hearing a lot about it from all of our um, panelists because we love our city a lot. It's consistently named as one of America's number one college towns. Um, it's a really young, vibrant city that is really passionate about food, art, music, and entertainment. Um, and we celebrate that year round, uh, no matter how hot or cold it is during the summers or winters. Um, because of the name of this panel, Best of Burlington, you're going to find out that there's more than one college here in Burlington. So while Champlain is small, a small school, 2,100 students on average with 16 in the classroom, um, you're sharing the city with over 14,000 students uh, every year. So you get to meet up with tons of other students just like yourself in the city. All right, so if students take advantage of all of the resources that Champlain has to offer, there's really no reason a degree with us won't pay off. Um, 88% of our 2019 graduates were continuing their education or were employed within six months of graduation. And of that 88% that were employed, 100% of those students were working in positions related to their career goals. That means you just spent four years in the classroom learning from professionals in the industry you wanna get in with, you were doing internships, um, and you were really studying as much as you could, and it'll pay off within that job. Um, 
students who are in our ITS program usually end up knowing what their job is going to be before they graduate. A lot of that has to do with our centers of experience, like the Leahy Digital Forensics um, program we have at Champlain College. All right, so quick admissions timeline. If you're interested in applying to Champlain College, we do have our applications open now. Um, we have early decision and regular decision. Early decision is really great for those students that are really passionate about our programs and they think it's where they're going to thrive. We would ask that you submit your full application and FAFSA information by December 1st um, so that we can get you those answers within the, by the time the holidays roll around. Uh, regular decision is a really great choice for any students who want a little bit more flexibility and want to see what other choices they have. We ask that you submit your components by February 1st so we can start reading those as soon as possible. Um, we are test score optional and have been for quite some time, so our team is already well versed in how to navigate reading applications without SAT or ACT scores. Um, but if you are proud of your scores, we'd love to see them as well. Uh, and you can see more on our website, champlain.edu, to find out what other components you need for an application, or you can connect with me at any time. Um, we do have some upcoming events. I will say we did have our last Explore open house last night, um, so I have to update this slide. Um, but we do have an, our experience open house is coming up in October, uh, along with a game specific open house. And those are navigating the more academic side of things at Champlain. So you get to hear from faculty members and see some mock classes. This is all virtual. Um, Champ Chats are a weekly series. October is going to be our last month doing them. And it's every Wednesday at four o'clock, an admissions counselor comes on live to answer your questions under a specific topic. We have virtual tours of our campus online and we're doing personal interviews with our senior admissions team uh, and with admissions counselors as well. You can, as well, you can go to champlain.edu slash visit to find out ways to register for these items. All right, folks, that is my presentation about Champlain College. Uh, I hope you liked what you heard. And if so, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're gonna have a slide at the end of all of these um, on how you can contact us after the fact. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to my friend Kelly with St. Mike's. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Um, all right. Hello, everyone. Just going to share my screen here. All right. So that should be good. Um, so hello again. Uh, my name is Kelly. I'm an admission counselor at St. Michael's College. I'm going into my second year working for the college and I did graduate from here as well. Um, so I'd love to speak to my experience as a student. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm also a native Vermonter uh, and I lived in the area for a number of years now. So I love to speak to the Burlington area as I love so much. So um, just a quick overview, um, St. Michael's College was founded in 1904 by an order of Catholic priests known as the Society of St. Edmund, or commonly referred to as the Edmundites. <coughs> Sorry, I have a frog in my throat. Uh, the foundation <coughs> of our school is rooted in hospitality, access to education, and social justice. And those values have lived through the generations and are still carried through today. You really get a sense of it when you're on campus. Uh, though we are a Catholic institution, we're about a 50-50 split between students who identify within the faith and students who do not. Um, so we're very open and inclusive of all faiths and walks of life. We are fully residential, uh, meaning that you live on campus for all four years. We're located just outside of Burlington in the suburbs of Colchester, and we are a liberal arts institution, and I'm going to speak to that quite a bit more. Um, so here you'll see a list of all of our academic opportunities at St. Mike's. We have over 40 different majors and minors that you can choose from. And if you're unfamiliar with the term liberal arts, you can essentially understand it as a way to achieve this really well-rounded education in which you gain the skills to really think critically and, and speak across disciplines. Um, it's very easy to double major uh, within liberal arts institutions. Uh, for example, I myself have a degree in environmental studies with a minor in sociology, uh, but I had many peers and friends who had a double major with two minors or um, a major with three minors. Uh, you know, it's really about where your passions fall and how much you want to dive into them. Uh, 
Um, and so also to our club. So of course we are a fully residential um, institution, meaning that you live on campus all four years. Uh, you'll event, you'll start in um, dorm style first year uh, setup, and then you'll eventually move into our apartments and townhouses that are located on campus. And being fully residential, we have uh, such an incredible opportunity to house all of these different clubs and organizations and opportunities for you right on campus. Um, there's a, a lot of stuff going on. As you can see, we have things from the knitting club to water polo. And I wanted to take this time to really talk about our longer standing clubs and activities. Um, I think it really makes us who we are being such a small um, community oriented college. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity to get involved here. And um, so I'm gonna move on and talk a little bit about our, our really outstanding clubs. So the first being the Adventure Sports Center. And it is so cool, the center, um, so neat. I never really know where to begin when I'm talking about it. Uh, so they lead trips almost every weekend and they always have two huge ones over spring break. So I think two years ago, they their options were backpacking through the Grand Canyon or backcountry skiing in Iceland. Generally, the trips range from free to like $10, $15, and that will depend on the length of the trip and what equipment might be needed. Um, of course, the, the spring break trips have some associated fees as well, um, but the center will provide all of the equipment that you need, so you don't have to worry about that, and that might be where the fee might come in if there's a $10 fee for a rental. Um, they will take any skill level. So if you've never thought about going ice pick climbing in the winter, as you can see in that photo, um, this is your chance. Um, you know, never thought of it before, have done it a hundred times, they want you, they'll be so excited to have you. Um, and again, you, you are led with a professional guide um, and you'll be completely supported the entire time. So it's a really fantastic um, opportunity to get involved with them, whether it's mountain biking, uh, you know, hiking for a day, doing a weekend hike and, and sleeping um, on the long trail. There's a lot of opportunities in the greater Burlington area to get outside and enjoy the beautiful surroundings that we have. Um, for instance, this view that I have behind me is called the view at St. Michael's and that is Camel's Hump right above me. Um, and it's a fantastic mountain to just head out with your friends and, and spend a day hiking. So MOVE stands for the Mobilization of Volunteer Efforts. Um, MOVE will host all sorts of events uh, all throughout the year, ranging from first year apple picking, uh, where first years gather together and they go out to a local orchard, and all of the apples that are picked during that time are donated to a local food shelf. They have um, dinner prep and other events for COTS, which is a local family shelter. Um, they'll uh, volunteer with our local animal shelters. And they also do a lot of work right on St. Michael's College community campus. Um, we do a lot of work down at the farm, our permaculture site. Uh, so students might go down there on Mondays and help with harvest. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the farm because that is just a gem. Um, but MOVE is fantastic. I think about 60 Five, 66% of students are involved with MOVE in their time here. Um, and and it's, it's a really wonderful opportunity. Um, outstanding is our fire and rescue team. Uh, we have a fully operational 24 seven, 365 days a year, fire brigade and emergency medical response team. This is staffed by our full-time students. They are volunteering their time to become EMT certified, state and nationally EMT certified. They are driving the trucks, taking the calls, being the first responders to emergency medical scenes. Um, and they take calls from the greater Burlington area. So that involves South Burlington, Colchester, Essex, Winooski, and Burlington itself, of course. And um, they're, it's, they're just so highly valued. They are our community heroes day in and day out. Um, they have been on campus through all summer. They generally stay over breaks. Um, and you do not have to be in the pre-med program to be involved with fire and rescue. Uh, one of the fire captains a few years ago was an English major. Um, truly, it's, it's just a large time commitment. You need to have that, that time um, available and the, the willpower to, to be a part of such an incredible group like this. Um, and it's very fun. And so, as I mentioned, the farm at St. Michael's um, is my favorite place on campus, personally. Um, 
it hosts, let's see, it hosts an orchard. Uh, it has four huge stretches of pollinator gardens, um, many exposed garden beds for things like spring greens, peppers, garlic, Brussels sprouts, spinach, and, and so many more. Um, we have two hoop houses, uh, which typically grow tomatoes and some squash and other, other things. Um, and the hoop house is um, a really necessary a uh, thing to have on a farm in Vermont as it extends your growing season by a number of weeks at least and uh, through the winter as well. Um, in the middle of winter on a sunny day, it could be 80 degrees inside the hoop house. Um, so the farm is in its fifth growing season now and the Center for the Environment was just launched in January. And the center is, is really a, a pedagogical um, idea bridging together all of our sustainability efforts on campus. We are a green campus um, and we put a lot of time and effort into establishing future plans and goals uh, to reduce our emissions, to, um, to work more towards a sustainable campus and, and future. Um, the farm stand, the all food, all of the food that is grown in at the farm is purchased by Sodexo, which then is put right into our dining hall on campus. So you're getting that farm fresh veggie. Uh, we also have a CSA available for students and uh, we also hold a farm stand every week that you can um, go and just purchase fresh, fresh veggies from. Um, so next up, I don't believe these links are, they're definitely not clickable. So if you wanted to take a screen capture or, or take a, a photo with your phone, um, I wanted to throw these in really just as an opportunity for you all to um, get a sense of what might be uh, the best way to get in contact with us, but also um, emphasis on the FAFSA. As Emily had mentioned, um, it becomes available in, oh, in a few days, October 1st. Um, and it's, it's a you know, it's free. If you ever get to a point where you're asked for, for a charge, pause, make sure you're in the right place, and then, and then move on. Um, but it's a really good idea to file that, um, send that in as, as soon as possible, and then um, once you apply, we'll be able to create a package for you and, and get that information out as far as your merit and financial aid. Um, we have a number of events coming up. Uh, we have our Center for the Environment open house, which is this Saturday, um, and you can register for it in the same uh, location as the online, or sorry, the um, online information session. Um, and I would very much encourage that. We also have a fall open house on the 16th. Um, and then you can also connect with me directly one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I will be your admission counselor through the process. So I would love to connect and just um, hear from you, hear how you are and, and share any uh, answers to questions that you might have. And, um, and similarly, I wanted to share our deadlines as well. We are uh, Common App exclusive and we are now taking applications. So if you are uh, all set with that, ready to go, you can send that in um, our first uh, early action one is November 1st and then December 1st and February 1st and no round is better than the other. Um, it's just simply if you are able to get it in uh, early on, you will receive your response sooner as well as your merit and financial aid package sooner. So it gives you a little more time of a, of a buffer to kind of compare your options and really take the time that you need to digest and make a, a huge decision. So. Um, Thank you very much for your time. And um, that's all I have. So I'm just going to share. All right. Uh, thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Ooh, one second here. For some reason, my virtual background disappeared. So let's make sure we get that back here. All right, there we go. Um, so my name is Candace. I'm your admissions counselor for the University of Vermont. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen as well and get that going. All right, um, so much like you guys have learned from my colleagues at St. Michael's and Champlain College, the University of Vermont is located in Burlington, Vermont, not to be confused with Burlington, New Jersey. Um, here's just a few quick stats about us. Uh, we are a medium-sized research-based institution. We have just over 10,000 undergraduate students who so are much larger than both Champlain and St. Mike's. Um, but you'll notice there the breakdown between our in-state and our out-of-state students is a little unusual for a state school. 73% uh, of our students actually come from outside the state of Vermont, both across the country and across the globe. 
And you'll see um, kind of the breadth of the majors that we offer here. We do have over 100 different majors in seven different academic schools and colleges. So really everything ranging from your traditional arts and sciences through education, engineering, nursing, um, business, you name it, we've got a major for you here. And like we said, we're in Burlington, Vermont. We definitely want to highlight how awesome of a city Burlington is. Uh, I don't think UVM would be the same without Burlington and Burlington would not be the same without UVM. Um, that energy kind of of the campus feeds the town and the town feeds it back to the university and our students with great internships, a thriving music scene, world class restaurants and coffee houses, and then also just taking advantage of our location with the trails and the parks and the beaches. Um, some other distinctions about UVM uh, would definitely include our faculty members. Professors at UVM are world class scientists and scholars and they're really driven to be making new discoveries in their fields. So um, they're, they're working in that, but they're also wanting to teach. So we follow a teacher scholar model, which give them the opportunity to do both. And as I mentioned, we're a research university, but we're also a land grant school. So uh, land grant universities are dedicated to education that improves the health of our society. So kind of guided by that mission, you'll find a really strong sense of purpose in our classes and our laboratories and the clubs and really kind of every aspect of life at UVM. Some of our other uh, more distinctive qualities can appear a little contradictory on the surface. Uh, UVM is old. We were founded in 1791. We're actually the fifth oldest university in New England, um, but we're constantly renewing our programs as well as our facilities to keep pace with the ever-changing world around us. Um, so that would include, um, you might see on campus our new STEM complex, and we're currently doing work on a multi-purpose event center and um, some renovations to our athletic facilities. And then our size being about 10,000 students, I think is that perfect sweet spot between big and small. Um, that's, you know, 10,000 is big compared to many liberal arts colleges, but it's much smaller than many other national uh, research universities. So you get kind of the best of both worlds with that small academic feeling in the larger framework of the university that gives you a lot of opportunities and resources. And then again, just focusing on our location because Burlington is unlike anywhere else I've ever been. Uh, we're both urban and open. Being in the city, um, a lot of great opportunities to, to kind of have that active lifestyle, but then take a deep breath, grab some fresh air and, uh, you know, go along the lake, check out the mountains, go skiing, whatever it might be. All right. There's a lot of different things to love about UVM. Um, here's just a few of them that we're getting excited about this year so you can get a glimpse into our community. Um, I did mention the STEM complex, which is great, but I do want to highlight another building on campus, um, and that would be the University of Vermont Medical School and the Health Center. So we have um, a hospital, it's a level one trauma center right on campus. This is a great opportunity for our students um, who are interested in any of the health uh, fields, medicine, whatever that might be, uh, to get some experience as an undergraduate student in that setting. Uh, we are division one for our athletic programs and we do have more than 200 different clubs and organizations including both club and intramural sports um, so much like many of the examples that kelly and emily gave we've got a little bit of everything as well uh, some of my favorites include the woodsman team and feel good which is a club that makes gourmet grilled cheese and then their proceeds go to help fight world hunger see another favorite of mine is definitely to the food um, Vermont food is fantastic and we definitely have a lot of locally sourced foods in our dining hall, including our ice cream that is made from the milk from our very own cows right down the street at our dairy farm. All right, so whatever your major might be, you're wanting to do some sort of experiential learning while you're um, in college, building your resume, putting those skills into practice. Um, so whether that includes an internship, research, service learning, study abroad, clinical student teaching, right? All of those kind of hands-on activities, um, you have the opportunity to do that at UVM. So you'll see here a list of recent internships that our students have done both in and around Burlington and Vermont, but also across the country and across the globe. Um, and then for study abroad, we do have more than 500 study abroad opportunities offered in more than 70 different countries. So there's a lot to take advantage of. I think another big component of your college experience is definitely that residential portion. Um, at UVM, all of our students are organized into different learning communities. And this is um, a way that you can come together with students who have a similar interest to you. You know you've got these common interests and you can start creating your home away from home. So you'll see here the different topics that students get to choose from. And that's right, you get to choose on your housing application. You would rank your preferences. We don't place you into these automatically. 
The UVM community is also dedicated to supporting and celebrating the unique identities of every student, uh, faculty, and staff members. Um, but we also share many things in common as a community too, and this we call our common ground, um, which is our commitment to upholding the values of respect, integrity, innovation, openness, justice, and responsibility in everything that we do at UVM. Um, one of our favorite traditions is actually um, coming together uh, for a candlelight ceremony on the university green uh, to, to kind of pledge and, and renew our pledge to uphold these values each year. We also deeply value diversity, equity, and inclusion in all aspects of our campus life as well as academic life. Um, so you'll see here the different identity centers that we have on campus, which are really active spaces for students to gather, plan, and kind of explore these different areas um, in this part of their identity. And we have diversity as a part of our general education requirements as well. We think diversity, sustainability, quantitative reasoning, and foundational writing and information literacy are all um, essential for students to become lifelong learners as well as responsible citizens. So at UVM, all students will take two diversity courses, at least the sustainability, um, quantitative reasoning, and foundational writing, and information literacy in addition to your college and your major requirements. All right, so all of these different pieces kind of come together and you know, following our four year pathway to success, you will ultimately graduate and go on to join our alumni network across the globe. 93% of our students were employed during graduate school within six months of graduation. And last but not least, a little bit about the admissions profile. Um, we are on both the Common App or the Coalition App. We have Early Action, which has a November 1st deadline. And we also have Regular Decision, which has a January 15th deadline. Uh, whichever timeline you apply on, whichever application you do, all applications are reviewed the same way. Your admissions application is also um, considering you for uh, financial aids, or not, excuse me, not financial aid, merit scholarships. Um, so for our out-of-state students, you'll be considered for merit, state scholar, or merit scholarships, as well as an invitation to join our honors college. Automatically, there's no extra stuff that you'll have to do. Um, to complete your uh, application, we will require your transcript. Um, we'll get uh, your essay, letters of recommendation, and all of that as a part of your application. We are test optional this year. So um, it's really up to you if you have SAT scores and you're happy with them, you think they reflect well in your ability of, as a student, you are welcome to submit them. But if you don't like your scores, you don't have scores, you can't take the test, that's totally okay too, and you don't need to submit them. Um, we'll consider all these different pieces. We're looking at your transcript for your academic preparation and um, looking at the rest of the pieces of your application holistically so we can get to know you as a student, your background, your unique story, and see how you're going to fit at the UVM community. I would also encourage you to go online and check out our optional supplemental questions, which are really a lot of fun. Um, there's, you just have to choose one of them, so I definitely recommend doing them, but they range from things like why UVM to which Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavor would you be and why? So I'm really looking forward to reading some of your unique responses this year. At this time, we are also um, not welcoming external visitors to our campus. We have our students there and we are doing everything that we can to keep them safe and on campus learning this semester. So we don't have any in-person on-campus programming that the admissions office is offering this fall. But we do have a really robust virtual visit page at uvm.edu slash visit. Um, to include our virtual open house program, some other workshops, uh, student meetings, meeting with your admissions counselor, and a whole variety of other programs this year. Last but not least, I'm going to put up our contact information for you guys. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, Emily, or Kelly, you can reach out to us directly by our emails. Um, we are happy to chat with you guys at any time. And that is what we are here for, to be a resource throughout this entire process. So I'll leave this up um, and remind you to ask us questions. Again, that's what we're here for. So please put in the Q&A. Um, any questions that you guys have, if you want to direct them to a specific school, please just you know, go ahead, put the, the acronym or the letter of us at the beginning. And then um, if not, it's a more general question, we can go ahead and answer that too. So I think I've got one for all of us um, to start. Is going to be what is your favorite restaurant in Burlington? Just as a little fun icebreaker to get people time to answer their, or ask their questions. Um, does Ben and Jerry's count as a restaurant for this question? Because <laughs> it should. I think that would be my answer. <laughs> the flagship <laughs> Ben and Jerry's is actually located on Church Street, which is downtown. So you get to visit the very first Ben and Jerry's that ever opened, although it's not its original location. It did move up the street, so still pretty close. 
Um, so and I think, that. Candace, actually to answer the question that you have at UVM, if I could be a Ben & Jerry's flavor and why, it'd probably be like death by chocolate because mm. I am a chocolate fiend. I can never get enough. And I love that they made an ice cream flavor specifically for me. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so with you. <laughs> Basically, we all just really love ice cream. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I would say my favorite restaurant is on Church Street and it's called Honey Road and it's a Mediterranean small plates restaurant and the pastry chef is just a magician. It's incredible. <laughs> it's a great place to uh, to bring parents to. Yeah, I, I would say Honey Road. Sorry. They're I've never been to so Honey awesome. Road. I just ate a lot of them the other night. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I would say my favorite restaurant is probably um, Skinny Pancake down by the lake. Um, it's a crepe restaurant. They use a lot of local and fresh ingredients um, from in and around Vermont. So I always love going there and uh, grabbing a bite to eat. All right, it looks like we do have a couple questions coming in, which is exciting. Awesome. Um, first one, are there going to be any virtual college visits anytime soon for our schools? So I'll just reiterate that us, we are only offering virtual visits at this time. So if you go to uvm.edu slash visit, that will give you all of our offerings this fall. Uh, same thing with Champlain College. Right now, um, the best thing to do is register for our experience open houses that are going to be hosted in October. Those are entirely virtual events, um, but they're super interactive. We have Kahoot trivia. We have live student panels. There's ways to win prizes. And within those, we're focusing a lot on the academic side. Um, so you get to talk to professors and do some mock classes, which is really cool. We do have a virtual tour on our website right now, and we're currently uh, updating it to be a little more um, interactive with our campus so you can see more. So also champlain.edu slash visit to find out about that. Yes, and, and same sentiment, we do have a virtual tour at St. Michael's College. Um, it is with UVisit, which is what you'll see in the URL code. If, uh, if you just simply type in Google St. Michael's College virtual online tour, or virtual tour, uh, you'll pull that right up. Um, and it's, we just actually redid it. It's brand new, so it's, it's quite fun and lovely. And um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I think you guys are gonna be better suited to answer this question than I will, because I'm actually a regional counselor and I live uh, down in New Jersey, not up in Vermont. Um, but we had uh, one of our students ask, are the winners too harsh to deal with compared to what we have in New Jersey? That's always the fun. Um, so I, I actually moved from New Jersey to Vermont. Um, so I know what that transition is like. Um, and I've now been living in Vermont for about 10, I've, I've experienced about 10 winters at this point. They are something to get used to. I'll say that it's usually about 10 degrees colder up here than it would be in New Jersey on an average winter. Um, and we tend to get a little bit more snow. The main thing is, is it's not necessarily the cold, it's more the wind off the lake that gets some getting used to, takes some getting used to. My biggest advice for students when they're moving up to Vermont is invest in good winter gear. Get a good jacket, get good waterproof boots and layers, um, and uh, try and approach it as if uh, it's a really great way to learn to be more adaptable in your life. It's something that the state of Vermont, we kind of are just used to it by now, so we get used to it and it's something that is a great way to learn how to adapt to other hardships in your life but it's not so so bad that you can't deal with it but a little colder than usual uh kelly if you want to add anything to that yeah i, I mean you you really summed it up perfectly i was going to say exactly that just have good uh clothing, outerwear, solid boots, socks, and a hat is so underrated, but it will go miles. Um, and it's really not that bad. I, I grew up in Vermont, so maybe I'm a little um, accustomed to it and weathered, but um, every year it seems to just be such a refreshing beauty with all the snow. Um, and then, as Emily said, the, the wind off the lake can be um, a lot, but if you have that outerwear, you're good. Yeah, one one more thing to note them. off of that, if you don't mind, I'm so sorry. No, I'm go for it. Um, winter sports are really popular up here because we get all that snow, we have the mountains, but it's also a really great way to help you through those winters is having something to stay active, get outside and be social through the winter months. Um, so if you're a skier or snowboarder, this is a really good place to be um, and it's a great way to try something new. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I feel like coming from like knowing what our winters are like down here, it's always kind of gray and slushy and I don't feel like we go out and take advantage of the winter as much as possible as we can up in Vermont. 
Um, so I say like, I would say Vermont is a happy winter <laughs> compared to what we have um, down here in kind of the mid-Atlantic region. Uh, we had another question. Um, are there a lot of opportunities to stay in Vermont after students graduate? I would say absolutely, yes. Uh, depending on what you want to do, but I think Vermont really has a little bit of everything. Um, so it depends on your major and what you're looking for, but that would be my take, which is very general. <laughs> I also, yeah. too, yeah, I, I mean, working for your alma mater, right? Uh, yeah, there's there a go. lot of opportunities just being a college town. There's a lot of different departments and, and growth in that sense. So um, I would certainly say there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, we also get a lot of young entrepreneurs up, up within all three of these schools. Um, and Vermont is such a unique community uh, that's really open to a lot of new ideas. So a lot of graduates from all of these schools tend to open businesses within this area that really are thriving um, and just add to the really awesome sense of community um, of alum from all three of these schools in the, in the area. I tried to leave Burlington after I graduated Champlain, didn't last very long. I quickly moved back because it's just such a great place to be. Um, here's a great question. I, I think that one of our people asked, was it, um, what are some things that we've come to love in Vermont that maybe aren't available in New Jersey? Um, I would answer this with like the flip of that. Vermont doesn't have any billboards. Like when you're driving on the highway and that's such a huge like mental shift compared to like driving up and down the turnpike or the parkway, like seeing all the different billboards and signs. I thought that was um, kind of nice that they didn't have that, like, but we have those in New Jersey. So the last billboard, yeah, the last billboard actually that goes whenever I drive from New Jersey up to Vermont, like when you're leaving upstate New York into Vermont, there's one last billboard and it's a, and it's for Maplefield, which is like a local gas station convenience store. And it says, yes, even our gas stations are nice. And that's the last billboard you see until you enter the state of Vermont, um, which I think jumping off of that really just the, the nature and the history, um, something that I, I liked that New Jersey does have in terms of its you know, it's one of the first states in the in the country. So there's a lot of history within the area. That's something you really get a lot of up here. Um, but it's really, if you looked, there's one place called, um, I'm forgetting what it's called, but there's a spot you can hike out to out in the lake and it looks back over the city of Burlington from the, the lake. And you can see that our city blends in really well with the, the forest that surrounds us. Nothing, none of the buildings are taller than the tree lines. A lot of the colors that are used in the building um, and that's done on purpose. We want to, we don't want to disrupt the nature around us. We want to be a part of it. And that's something I really appreciate as um, being a lover of nature and a photographer and such. I think it just adds to it. Awesome. Looks like we have one last question. Um, are the, is there a swim, a swim team or a pool at our respective schools? You guys want to go? <laughs> Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, St. Michael's does have a swim and dive team as well, two separate teams, um, and we do have a pool right on campus. Um, we do recruit, so it's certainly a good idea to go on our website to the athletics tab. Um, again, I'm all for the just easy Google searches. If you do St. Michael's College Athletics, um, one of those first links will pull you right up to the page and you can do I want to play and that is our recruitment survey where you can indicate that you're interested in swim or dive and then uh, the coach will see your interest and you can start communicating. Uh, Champlain does not have a uh, swim team or pool on our campus um, but we do have discounts at the brand new YMCA in Burlington that does have a beautiful pool um, and at the edge which has four locations in uh, northern Vermont um, several of which do have pools as well so unfortunately no swim team with us. Yeah we do have a uh, division one women swimming at UVM but we don't have a men's team but we do have the the pool available for club and intramural sports as well. So if you've got about a minute or so left um, with our time here today. So I just want to say um, thanks again to all of you for coming out to learn a little bit more about um, uh, the colleges in Burlington, the best of Burlington, if you will. Um, if you need anything, you can always reach out to us. Um, and we're looking forward to working with you throughout um, your application year. Guys, anything you want to, parting words? Uh, a lot of what you said, Candace. can't wait to work with you. Um, if, if you're interested in anything you've heard tonight, we do hope that you reach out to us so we can just continue the conversation. That was it. Great. Yeah. Thank you for joining.
And if there are any questions that we didn't get to, we will. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, certainly appreciate um, our presenters and also appreciate um, all of you that were able to join us today. Um, there will be a quick survey that will appear after we sign off today. So we would appreciate you taking that. Um, and as a reminder, the recording will be available in about a week. Um, and then definitely look at the other sessions that are taking place um, between this week and next week. And we hope that you'll join us for some of those. Thanks so much.